part two about how my aunt kidnapped my dog. So like I said, my dad was like, go to sleep. And I went to try to go to sleep, but I couldn't because my dog was freaking missing. So I go downstairs to get some melatonin when I hear my dad talking shit on the phone to my aunt. He was talking about something with the dog. But my dumb ass starts walking across the floor and all of a sudden the floor creaks. So I run upstairs, get back into bed and go to sleep. So the next day after school, I tell my dad I'm going to go to my aunt's house because she didn't live too far away. And I thought, okay, well, maybe she's seen him run around her neighborhood, whatever. And he was like super off about it at first. But he was like, fine, whatever, go to your aunt's house. So I get to her house and I walk in and I hear dogs barking. Um, one dog because she didn't have any fucking dogs. And I walk over to the backyard, and what do you know, my puppy is sitting in her fucking backyard. So I brought my dog home and told my dad. And he got really mad. It turns out he didn't even want the dog in the first place, so he gave her to my aunt. He apologized and we're good now, but... Here we go with another toxic best friend story time. So a little background information. So a couple of years ago, I became best friends with this one girl who we're gonna call Sammy. Every year, her family would go on a camping trip, and every year, I couldn't go. Something would always come up, even if it was last minute. Well, this year, finally, nothing was standing in the way, so I could go on this freaking camping trip. And we had literally been planning this for, like, six months. So this plan was, we would go up there in the afternoon, after I was done with work, and after she was done with school. Well, then she calls me, and she asks me if I can call off work and go up a day early with her. And I told her, no, I can't do that. I already took off a bunch of time because I was sick and for my sister's wedding. So I need the money. So after I tell her I can't go up on Thursday, I would rather go on Friday, like we said. She responds with, well, we're going on Thursday and either you can take the day off and join or not. And then I told her, I'm not driving when the whole plan was for you to drive. Like for part, part two about my extremely toxic best friend. So like I said, she tried to talk me into taking off work so that way we could go up on Thursday, but I told her no, I would rather stick with the plan and go up Friday. And then she says, um, well, you can do that, but we're all going up on Thursday, so you're gonna have to find your own ride. And then I told her, I'm not driving up there, I don't know this place. So at that point, I was like, fuck it, if they leave without me, they live without me. I do not care at this point. And I pretty much said that, if you want to go without me, then go without me. And she called me and she was like, you're being extremely rude. A little background information on Sammy. She was a super selfish, self-centered person. And she has like only child syndrome. Every time we hung out, we had to do what she wanted to do. I was super annoyed about this because I had already planned for this vacation. Meaning I took the time off work. I rearranged my whole schedule. And now I don't really know if I want to be friends with her. What do you guys think? Story time about how my best friend was obsessed with me. And I'm not saying obsessed as in, oh my god, like, you know, she does her hair like me. No, I'm saying in a creepy way. So a little background information. I was 14 and it was the summer before I was going into high school. And I had this best friend who we're going to call Madison. Now, I met Madison like a month before school ended. She was one of those kids that nobody really liked and nobody wanted to be near. But we were partnered up in this one class and she's actually really funny. So since summer just started, I invited her over to have a sleepover at my house. Everything went well, we were swimming, we watched movies. But my house was in a really wooded area, so if you had certain phone carriers, you wouldn't get any reception. So she asked if she could use my iPad to text her dad. And it was like 11 o'clock at night, so I let her use it. And then we went to sleep. Well, I woke up around 3 in the morning because my phone kept going off, like for part 2. Part two about how my best friend was obsessed with me in a creepy way. So like I said, I woke up at three in the morning because my phone kept going off and it wasn't dinging or anything. It was just a light flashing when it would go off and on. So I look around for Madison and then I see my bathroom light is on, but the door is shut. So I just brush it off and I go on my phone and I see a bunch of text messages that were sent from me, but they weren't sent from me. Like obviously somebody had went on my iPad and started sending people messages. So I look at these messages and it's all texting Madison. And I kid you not, it's literally pictures of me while I'm sleeping that she sent to herself. Like there was a picture of my hair, a picture of one of my birthmarks. And then on her side of the nightstand, there was literally a lock of my hair. Like she cut my hair off and it was in a Ziploc bag. So at this point, I'm actually really creeped out and I go and tell my mom. And my mom talked to her mom and apparently she's done this story time about how I got my ex toxic best friend jumped. So a little background information. I was 16 and a sophomore in high school. 
And like any of these toxic best friend story times, she was super jealous of me for literally no reason. She would literally try to be better than me in everything. Like when I did a sport or a club, she would join immediately right after. And it wasn't a, oh, I'm going to join my best friend. No, it was, I'm going to join so that way I can show her that I'm better than her. For example, in sixth grade, I was captain on the volleyball team and she decided that she was going to try out her sophomore year. She played it off as if she just wanted to try it out, but then I got announced captain and she was pissed off when she heard that. She literally blocked me on everything and she came from a super wealthy family, so she was used to getting whatever she wanted. And my whole friend group would literally tell me, you need to stop being friends with her. She's toxic. She's this, she's that. The only thing that stopped me from being friends with her was the blackmail. Like for part two about how I got my toxic ex-best friend jumped. So like I said, the only thing that was stopping me from not being her friend was the blackmail that she had. Every time that I pissed her off or even just randomly, she would be like, oh, I'm going to send this out. I'm going to expose you. She was just overall a shitty friend. So I had an exposing account on Instagram where I would expose people in my class. It got banned, but she DM'd the account, the blackmail. Little did she know it was literally me who was running it. Obviously, I didn't post it, but I showed one of my friends, and we kind of made a plan to get rid of the blackmail. So my birthday was coming up, and I was going to Disney, and my mom said that I could invite two friends. Originally, I wasn't going to invite Tessa, but since I had this plan, I invited her and one of my other friends. On the third night, my friend and I decided to take our plan into action. Tessa was sleeping, so I went on her phone, and I went and deleted all the pictures. Life for part three. Part three about how I got my toxic ex-press friend jumped. So like I said, on the third night, she was sleeping. So we went on her phone. I deleted all of the blackmail that she had on me. And I even went a step further and screenshotted all of the nudes that she was sending back and forth with older guys. And these guys were way older than her, like way older. And I sent them to myself and deleted the text off of her phone. Fast forward, we drop her off at her house. I stay over my friend's house and we decide that we're going to post everything to my exposing page. And we also came up with a really good idea. Why not send this to Tessa's parents? So we sent them to her parents. And guys, when I tell you this exposing page had so many people on it, it really did. Somebody was like, OMG, like, please send a face reveal. Like, I won't tell anybody. So what did I do? I sent a picture of Tessa and that person posted it to their Snapchat story. Fast forward to the first day of school. We're outside for gym class and three girls beat her. Story time. Everybody's saying that I cheated on my ex-boyfriend, but I want your guys' opinion. So a little background information. I was a college student and I had been with this guy who we're going to call Jacob for about six months. Towards the end of his and I's relationship, stuff just started to get really boring and every day I would get the ick from him. Now, at this time also, I had gotten a new job. While I was working, I had met this guy who we're going to call Tim. Since I was a college student, I decided to start working more so Tim and I would see each other literally every day. Him and I really hit it off, like straight away. Not to mention, him and I had a lot of things in common, his sense of humor was great. Well, the one night before work got out, Tim asked for my number. And I said yes. However, since I was still with Jacob, I decided that I was going to break up with him before I texted Tim. So, I broke up with him. Fast forward to now, Tim and I are in a super good relationship. But now everyone's saying that I cheated on Jacob. What do you guys think? Story time about how my aunt drugged me. So, a little background information. I was 16 and in 10th grade. And I had never met my aunt before, but whenever my parents talked about her, it was only bad things. Well, the one day I went to go and ask my mom something and I heard her on the phone with someone. She was like, no, I'm not giving you any more money. It's not my fault if you spent it all on drugs. And we barely talked about my aunt, so I didn't know that's who she was talking to. Fast forward, I come home from school the one day and my dad's sitting on the porch with this woman who looks like she's homeless. My dad introduces her. He's like, oh, by the way, this is your aunt. He was like, oh, well, she wants to spend some time with you, so you're going to go with her for a few hours. I was hesitant because of all of the stuff that my mom had told me about her, but I started walking down to her car, and my mom whips in the driveway. Eventually, my aunt ends up talking my mom into letting me see her, and apparently my aunt has been asking to see me for a very long time. So she takes me to the mall, we eat, we get our nails done, and at this point, I'm thinking she's kind of normal until she takes me to her house. Like for part two. Part two about my aunt who drugged me. So like I said, she ended up talking my mom into letting me go with her, which I was super grossed out because she smelt really bad and her car was a mess, but she took me to the mall. I thought she was normal. And then she took me to her house. 
When we got into the neighborhood, I kind of recognized it because my grandma lived in the same neighborhood. But anyways, we pull up and it is literally trashed. Like there's fucking garbage all outside of the house. And I walked inside thinking that it would be better. No, it was filthy. There were needles everywhere. You could definitely tell the druggies lived there. And they had weird pictures hanging up all over the walls of these girls. Random girls. Like when I asked who they were, they were like, oh, I don't know. So then her boyfriend's walking around the house. He's like 40 years old, walking around in his boxers around me. So I call my mom. I go outside and I'm waiting for her. And my aunt comes out and she's like, do you want a glass of water? She gave me some water and it tasted really sour and I had chugged the whole thing. And that was the last thing I remember before I woke up on her couch in the morning. Like for part three. Story time about how my stepdad made my mom choose between him and my brothers. So a little background information. I was 13 years old and in seventh grade. And I had two older brothers, Josh and Alex, who were twins and they were both four years older than me. Whenever I was three, my dad left my mom for his dentist. And we never saw him again because he decided to start a whole new family with them. Now, because of that, my older brothers always felt like they had a specific role in my family. Especially because the guys that my mom brought home, they would only last a week. Well, finally, my mom met this guy who's really nice. And she decided that she was going to get married to him. But he despised my older brothers. Mainly because before he moved in with us... My mom would not depend on him for anything. Anything that needed taken care of around the house, my brothers would do it. And we didn't have too much money while this guy was loaded. Like the one time my mom and this guy, who we're gonna call Jerry, got into a fight. Like for part two. I'm me, I'm Barbie dripping. DB9, Barbie whipping. No cramping, you here for long or no, I'm just passing. Do you want to drink? No, nah, thanks for asking. Ooh, I'm not here. Don't look like you know me, like you know me, I'm not here. My mom had one upstairs so we get into the room we hear the shower running which was weird because we didn't think anybody was there so instead of me calling my dad because it might have been a murderer i go and the door slightly creaked open so i look through the door and obviously i could hear you know what but hers and his clothes were on the floor like for part three Part three about how my mom got with my sister's boyfriend. So like I said, obviously we could hear stuff. We saw their clothes on the floor. So I took a video and I took a picture. But obviously you couldn't see anything. And I didn't want to tell my dad first. So my best friend and I, we went downstairs. We went to the carnival. And when my sister got back, she ended up getting back with Ben. Because obviously after he was done, he went back to my sister. I know this is confusing, but try to keep up. 
So I asked my sister if she can pretty please take me and my friend down to the pool to go swimming. So my sister came down with us and then I was like, I have to tell you something. So then I ended up showing her the photos and the videos. And at this point, she's like, what the fuck? So surprisingly, without choking this man to death, she goes upstairs, she goes to sleep. And then the next morning, she goes and has a talk with my mom. So my mom, my sister, my friend and I, we all sat down at the buffet in the morning and had breakfast. And my dad and Ben weren't there. Well, long story short, my mom ended up saying, it's not fair that you bring all these young guys around me, da-da-da-da-da. Are you really going to break up our family because of this? And till this day, my dad still does not know about it. I just had to let you know your about how somebody stole my $12,000 dog at a house party. So a little background information, I was 17 and a junior in high school, and I decided to throw a party at my house before winter break. So usually whenever I threw parties, I would always have everybody in the basement because I had a pretty big basement. There was a sliding glass door to the outside, so nobody had to go upstairs to get in or get out. And I would always lock the door to the upstairs just in case anybody decided to wander up the stairs. And because I didn't think anybody would get in upstairs, I let my dogs run around the house. So everybody who I invited showed up and I guess that my address got leaked because a bunch of random people started showing up at my house. And it's not like I didn't have neighbors. No, I lived in a very tight cul-de-sac. So people were parking in front of my neighbor's driveways, in my neighbor's driveways. So I called my parents and eventually I had to have my neighbors call the cops on my house party. My own party. Like for part two. Part two about how somebody stole my $12,000 dog at my house party. So like I said, I had to call my parents and they got the cops called on the house so that way I could get everybody that I did not know out of the freaking house. Thankfully, my friends and I hadn't started drinking yet because literally five minutes after my friends showed up, random people started showing up in big groups. So after everybody clears out, I go to walk upstairs and I have my keys in my hand ready to unlock the door. The door was literally busted open. Like somebody had to have kicked the doorknob because the frame was cracked, the door was cracked. It was bad. So I'm freaking out. I wasn't even thinking about my dog at the time until my friend Kirsten asked to see my new puppy. Because Kirsten had just got home from college and she had only ever seen the dog over FaceTime. So we're searching all over the house and we cannot find my fucking dog. Well, when my parents got home that night, they pretty much grounded me for life. But then I want to say a month later, my friend Jake, who was there that night, called me freaking the fuck out. Like for part three.